So evangelical Christian families are the largest of the eight American religious communities that we explored in this special issue. Gallup polls and Pew Research polls have shown that anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of Americans self-identify as evangelicals, although obviously, like in every other faith, levels of active involvement and belief vary dramatically and you know, levels of belief in all faiths are lower than affiliation. So the folks that we interviewed included 23 evangelical Christian families, including a number of their youth. Some of those that we interviewed that were evangelical uh, overlapped with some other religious ethnic communities, for example, black Christians or Asian Christians. But in this particular chapter, we focus on evangelical belief and practice. The nature of the Bible was very important, that evangelicals were very focused on the Word of God and quoted the Bible a lot and honored both the Old and the New Testaments. Not unique, but a distinctive strength of this community is that they're the only group that mentioned as a major theme the idea that they were open to getting help from often pastors or counselors who were available to them in their churches to seek help outside of their marital relationship. And unfortunately, too many couples don't seek help and they only rely upon their own resources and their own sort of expertise in trying to strengthen their marriage. And so those who are willing to seek help from those who have some training, some expertise as therapists, as counselors, whether that's pastoral counseling or professional family therapy, marriage counseling, in many cases that can be marriage saving And we think that that's a great strength. And we appreciated that willingness to look outside of their own family, to draw strength from their pastors and from others in their faith community to help them strengthen their marriage. As I mentioned, they did turn to the Bible a lot. For example, verses about who can find a virtuous woman in Proverbs 31, which also, of course, is used quite a bit by our Jewish friends. A number cited some of Paul's epistles, the verse in Ephesians 5.25, Quote, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, end quote. That idea, that sense of servant leadership of giving yourself for others was quoted by quite a number of the husbands and fathers. This whole idea of servant leadership where as parents you're supposed to combine humility and service and sacrifice, the willingness to sacrifice for others as part of your Christianity was mentioned a number of times. And those efforts of families to sincerely try to live their faith, to turn to sacred texts, to try to improve relationships, that was very meaningful to us. By way of personal experience with evangelical Christians, I'll just mention briefly my friendship with Pastor Mark Turco. He's an ordained Assemblies of God minister and is an associate pastor at a local evangelical church here in Utah County. And he and his wife, Christian, are marvelous examples of evangelical Christian faith and commitment and devotion. Mark and Christian have invited my wife, Mary, and I to their home for dinner. We've had them in our home for dinner. And I've enjoyed many long conversations with both Mark and Christian about their faith, our faith, connections, um, differences. And we have mutual respect for each other's faith. Neither of us are going to try to convert each other to our faith. We know well that that we each love and are devoted to our own faith. And that idea of understanding that when you talk with someone about their faith, if you think of your job as an effort to try to convert that person, that's going to put up barriers and walls and bring tensions. If you think of your responsibility in that relationship to come to learn to understand that person with whom you're talking and understand how they live their faith, what they believe, what they practice, what their faith means to them, then you build connections and relationships and probably have greater influence on each other. My own experience is I really love to learn about other faiths. And in the class that I teach here at BYU on family and world religions, I'm so delighted that Pastor Mark has been willing to come to my class uh, each semester for now many years, I think eight or nine years. He's come and spent an hour with my students sharing about his faith, and they've loved having him. They asked him lots of questions. He has also taken the time to get to know the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, my faith. And so he has respect and appreciation for us. He's not interested in converting. He thinks that we are wrong theologically on some very important things, but he's taken the time to come to understand us and to respect us. 
And it's wonderful to have a friendship, a long-term friendship with someone who's different from you, but who respects you and who you respect. And that mutual respect and holy envy is an important part of what we're trying to accomplish in the American Families of Faith Project. 